the following announcement has been paid for by Perched on the Top Rope. You got the raging Cajun, Lash LaRue, the one and only. You know, I spent the majority of my career perched on the top rope, and you are watching me now perched on the top rope with my man Lee Walker. Laissez le bon temps rouler. Let those good times roll. Uh, what you had done in the WCW magazines with Lashing Out, and that's when, when, I, when I saw you on ad-free shows, it reminded me of the magazine. And I, I went looking back for the magazines and like going on eBay and stuff to find them just for last wow. year. Out. <laughs> um, man, that, I mean, I'm incredibly flattered and humbled by that. Thank you, man. Um, you know, I had just interviewed uh, Jacques Rougeau who mm -hmm. uh, shared a story with me, how Bret Hart would uh, in the locker room, draw on the chalkboards or the marker boards and stuff in the locker rooms. Uh, did you ever do any of that when you were in WCW in the locker rooms? Man, that's actually exactly how I had a career in cartooning in the first place. And the reason why is because I've always enjoyed drawing. And, and I tell people all the time, if you've ever been around kids, kids love to draw. It's just some kids keep drawing and some kids stop drawing. And I was that kid that always kept drawing and got a little better, a little better. And I had other friends when I was, you know, a tiny little lad that enjoyed comic books. And they would do what kids often do. They would trace cartoons out of the comic books or superheroes out of the comic books. And they knew that I was the one that was kind of really passionate about art and drawing. So they bring it to me and want to impress me, you know, and they go, look at this, man. What do you think? And I'm going, yeah, that looks just like Batman, but, and I love the character Batman. Don't misunderstand me, but he's got a square head in the comic book and not a lot of detail. What are you impressing me with? Right. That's the way I felt at the time because I was intrigued by faces and the game changer for me was, and I don't know if you're old enough to remember this publication or not, but there was Mad Magazine, right from your stomping grounds there in New York, you know, back in the day. And I grew up on Mad Magazine, and it was right up my alley because it was my type of humor, but it also uh, spoofed and lampooned movies and TV shows. And for that to work, before I even knew what a caricature was, Lee, for that to work, man, you're opening it up and they're, they're making fun of Top Gun. Dude, you don't have to tell me that's Tom Cruise. I'm looking at a cartoon that looks just like Tom Cruise. That was like black magic to me. Is how does an artist do that? Draw so simply, but do it in such a way that it's an immediate likeness. For me, it was similar to seeing a great comedian doing a just dead on impression of someone. And you go, oh my gosh, he sounds just like him. I would look at these drawings and go, that looks just like that particular actor. And so I began copying pictures I saw in Mad Magazines and their style of drawing. And that just really intrigued me and spoke to me. And so that carried over into WCW. When I started wrestling for WCW, similar story to what Jacques was saying about Brett. You'd have to be at these shows, man, at noon. You're on the road 300 days out of the year. You're in a different building every night and you have to be at the arena at noon for a show that doesn't go live on TV until 7 p.m. And there's all kinds of reasons for that. I mean, you want to make sure no one's missed their flight. Nobody's lost their luggage. If you've got pre-tapes, you have time to do that. If you have local media spots, you have time to do that. But if you don't have all those things to fill the time, there's only so much catering you can eat, right? So I would go in the locker room and while other guys would play cards or uh, you know, different games like that, man, I would take take dry erase markers with me and I would draw the guys in the locker room. And Kurt Angle especially was somebody, not Kurt Angle, I apologize, I meant to say Kurt Henning, was somebody that especially loved that, you know. He's the classic river. Everybody knows his, his reputation for that. And so this was right up his alley. And while I'm drawing, he would go, oh, man, that's phenomenal. Draw Hulk Hogan. Well, okay. And they go, now draw him really old. Kurt, come on, man. Draw with an oxygen mask and a walker. And I'm going, dude, he's in the other room. I'm like 20 years old. I don't need that kind of heat. You know, and he's going, oh, don't worry about it. And he gave me a line, Lee, that I still even use now when I'm doing live caricatures. He goes, if anybody says anything, you tell them you don't write the news. You're just reporting it. And so uh, I would just entertain the boys by doing that in the locker room. And editors for the wrestling magazines, the publishers would see it, you know, uh, Guys like Bill After saw it and wanted me to draw for his wrestling magazines. 
And then Ross Foreman, who was editing WCW magazine at the time, saw my work and wanted me to do cartoons for the WCW magazine. And I love Bill to death. The only reason why I didn't go with the after Max is just because I'm a loyalist at heart and WCW is the company I'm working for. And so if the home base is going to ask me to draw cartoons for our magazine, then I felt like that's where I needed to be. And it was so perfect for me because at that point, I was not a professional cartoonist. I was a wrestler that could kind of sort of draw. That was the novelty of it, right? So my very first cartoon I did for WCW Magazine was Bill Goldberg. And uh, I drew him with those giant traps coming up so high that they were covering up his ears. Some kids asking for his autograph. And he said, I can't hear you, kid. What would you say your name is? My traps are too big. And I literally drew that on typing paper, inked it. Uh, by hand and colored it with color pencils and markers and handed in a hard copy to the magazine for them to publish. Um, in fact, I took it to Bill and I said, Hey Bill, I just want to make sure you don't have a problem with this before they put it in the magazine. You know, I want to, they didn't want to get any heat. And he looked at it and looked at me and looked at it and he goes, bro, you keep drawing me that big. You can write whatever you want to. And after that, you know, all the boys were cool with it. I never got any negative feedback for a cartoon I did for the magazines, which I always tried to draw in a way that was funny, but put the boys over, never at the expense of them. And so fast forward, man, over the course of about 12 years, I did cartoons for the wrestling magazines. Every month I would push myself to get better and better and better. I recognized I was in a unique position. There wasn't another wrestler that could kind of sort of draw like I could that was being published in the magazines. So it's not like I'm going to lose my job to somebody at that point. Right. And it's not like I was relying on the magazines to pay my bills. I was a professional wrestler. So I experimented and I went from drawing on that typing paper to drawing on paper and scanning it into my computer and doing all the color work in Photoshop and just teaching myself that to by the time I retired from doing from, from wrestling and stopped doing the cartoons for the wrestling magazines, man, I was drawing directly and painting directly into a computer with like a tablet and, and all this stuff that I just kind of taught myself to do over the course of a few years.